Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We have a very simple beer mm -hmm. from uh, some grain uh, that we might not otherwise have access to. I did an interview uh, a few weeks ago with Aaron Mayer from Pine Bluffs Distilling up in Wyoming. Wow. And they get their grain from Wyoming Malting Company, which is owned by the same company. Wow. And the malt, the grain that goes into the malt, is, comes from just around, within a certain radius, of around that establishment. So very local stuff no kidding. up there in Wyoming. And Aaron sent me some bourbon, some whiskey, but he also sent me 10 pounds of Vienna malt that they Sweet. made there at the Wyoming malting place. So you made? So I made a Wyoming Vienna Kolsch. <laughs> it's, like it's like a geography quiz. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, first of all, let's taste the grain okay. a little bit. Yeah. Lovely plumage. Mm. That's really nice. It's good. Now, how does that compare? I guess we should. I should have asked you to bring some. Mm, I should have standard Vienna from uh, from your mm -hmm. store. Yeah. But on your on your munching of Vienna, does it taste like Vienna? I don't know. Sure. Well, sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it tastes like malt. It tastes good. It tastes good. Nice and fresh and. And um, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of uh, caramel in there. A little bit, yeah. It's good. Sweet. Nice. Mm -hmm. So I made a okay. beer, and I wanted to make a beer that, that really showed off the grain, uh, showed off the malt. So what I did was into eight gallons or 30 liters of water in my Bruna bag, uh, set up from high gravity, my Warthog system, I put 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms of Wyoming Vienna malt, and that's it. And I mashed. Uh, I wound up mashing it 90 minutes at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 C. And I was monitoring my refractometer to see how it was uh, coming along. And it leveled out at 90 minutes. So I collected my wort uh, and into that I put two ounces or 56 grams of tetanine. And that's it for 60 minutes. Uh, and then I, I, I pulled that off into my no chill container. Yeah. and uh, chilled that overnight and then poured it into a glass fermenter and then pitched Imperial G03 Dieter German ale yeast. Yeah. So that's a Kolsch yeast, right? Yeah. So uh, there you go. That's the beer. Wow. Uh, starting gravity 1048, final gravity 1010, ABV 5%. So super simple beautiful. beer. Um, super easy to make. It's, it is a beautiful it's lovely. beer. Lovely. Yeah, wow. And uh, let's see how it, how it tastes. Mm. Oh, cheers. Yeah, I forgot to. Hope it doesn't bring us bad luck or Ragnarok or anything like that coming <laughs> down on me. <laughs> All you Ragnarok worshippers out there. I don't know what that is. It's the sweet or the, the Norwegian is, god of. Or is it Ragnarok? Ragnarok. <laughs> what's it, Ragnarok? Do 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 do. Ragnarok do 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 do. <laughs> Oh. Ragnock's like a bag of ha bag of hangover. <laughs> I got the Ragnock. <laughs> what is it? Ragnarok? Who is it? I think it's Ragnarok. Oh, well. We're old. Yeah. All right. Well, that's just a little slice of heaven. Wow, that's really good. Mm. It's a little bit lemony. Mm? I think from the hops maybe, or maybe the yeast. I don't know. It fermented know. a little warmer than I wanted it to. I brewed this... Um, Beautiful beer. Uh... In 17th of uh, September was when I brewed it. I pitched it the next uh -huh. day. And it was still hot as a firecracker mm -hmm. here in northwest Arkansas. So I put it in the basement. And uh, it was still oh, boy, like 72 degrees or something down there. Yeah. So I think it might have gone up to like 80 degrees Fahrenheit fermentation temperature. But still, it's it's <clears throat> clean. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's not lager-like. It's, a, no, little, it's, a, it's a little fruity. Yeah. Boy, it's really crushable, though. And you mm. can drink a bunch of that. Mm. So it's we're in an interesting time where, you know, we have we've had craft brewing, boom, 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 yep. and now we're starting to have craft distilling yep. coming along, and and then craft malting mm -hmm. is in there as well. Yeah, and we're going to start seeing these little 
malting houses, you know, across the country, and maybe they'll just be local, you know, distributed locally, and then, uh, or maybe some may be, you know, kind of like boutique little uh, malts that we can, you know, find it at a homebrew store. I don't know. It's probably tough for you as a homebrew store owner to, you know, stock a lot of uh, little well, niche things. <clears throat> there that, aren't. Uh, so far, there aren't, at least for me. Now, there might be if I lived in Michigan or if I lived on the West Coast, particularly in the upper Northwest, that, that would be a different picture. But mm -hmm. here in Arkansas, that's true. It, it, there, there just isn't because of our climate and, and where we're located. But I have spoken with some people in Oklahoma and with, the, uh, with Oklahoma State, and they're working on some malt varieties that will do well, and they're, ex they're exploring growing malt, uh, barley, I should say, it, not growing malt, but growing barley mm -hmm. in Oklahoma and and thinking about the distribution and the uh, sustainability of it. So those are the things you have to think about. Yeah. Not just I'm going to plant a few acres and you know and play around, but how can we sustain it? Mm -hmm. And then the University of Arkansas is also working on uh, hops. Mm. So there's some work, and they're a few years away. I mean, it's not like you know next year they're going to you know, plant a magic garden with some beans and all of a sudden, they're, you know, they're going to grow. <laughs> you have to find the right varieties. They have to, uh, you know, the it's the length of day has a lot to do with what varieties will grow. Right. Powdery mildew is a big problem, especially mm -hmm. for me if I don't get some Johnson & Johnson <laughs> when I shower. But, you got to uh, be careful of that stuff. you got to be careful. <laughs> but it's a big problem with hops as well. So <laughs> uh, there's all kinds of issues that you have when you try to take a product that grows in the northern areas mm -hmm. like hops and right. move it down into a southern climate like ours. So there's a lot of issues, but as they're able to do that, stores like mine welcome those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would. And so, and we're starting to see that with, with yeast more. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more portable, more transportable product than hops or malt would be. But um, yeah, so you you never know. And as they, as they happen, honey's one that that I can get sometimes, and when I can, I, I do, and, and we sell it pretty quickly, and then and then we have to move on. But <laughs> there you go. But it's 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 really cool that the, that we're hearing from small yeah malting companies, mm -hmm. uh, and it's an opportunity for like up in Wyoming, uh, you know, they're working with farmers and they're having to train yeah. the farmers to grow the grain differently. Uh, because Aaron said they, you know, farmers want to grow it as quickly as possible and water it as much as possible, and, and that, you know, you get grain with a lot of protein in it. Yeah. And you know, we don't want a lot of protein in our beers. Right. Uh, so they have to train the farmers to, to grow malting grain instead of just, you know, just regular seed or feed grain. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but nice job. Very, I'm, I'm really impressed with this malt, and this beer is, is super drinkable. And uh, the recipe is super simple. If you want to try out a recipe, you know, just, just try out a, a particular base malt. Super simple. Vienna and Tetning. And there you go. So there you go. Super easy. Super easy drinking. Give it yeah. a try. It's brewing season. Let's finish this video so we can drink this beer. Let's <laughs> get on with the real work of the evening. All right. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Happy brewing. Come and visit us online. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com. Yum. Mmm. That's really, really nice. Mm-hmm. Super simple. Yep. Super clean. Uh, super malty.